About reparations, a skeptical President Barack Obama in 2016 told reparations proponent Ta Nahisi Coates that it would divide the country. Obama said, quote, it is hard to think of any society in human history in which a majority population has said that as a consequence of historic wrongs, we are now going to take a big chunk of the nation's resources over a long period of time to make that right. So the bottom line is that it's hard to find a model in which you can practically administer and sustain political support for these kinds of efforts, end of quote. That's what Obama said in 2016. And a majority of blacks support reparations today, hopefully not the approach of this young lady. The Q-tip people are the last ones to ever talk about somebody stealing anything. Y'all wouldn't be in this country had it not been for y'all stealing it. But well, y'all are more focused on people looting and trying to get necessities and things that they need. And yes, a TV is a necessity thing. Then the people who are literally freezing to death in their own home, freezing to death outside because this city did not shut down the way it should have. Byron Brown want to get on here and talk about, we told y'all, we knew this was going to happen. But why didn't you close businesses when you should have? Why you got everybody rushing home at noon when the and that was just the beginning of the storm. So if you don't live in Buffalo, even if you do live in Buffalo, you feel like you're better than because people are out here stealing and ugh, you would never. First of all, if you are a mayo monster, that is how your ancestors got everything from stealing. People are out here trying to get toilet paper. People are out here trying to get, you know, just small little food from family dollar. And y'all got to capitalism. Steal everything that you need, babe. Because at the end of the day, this city continuously fails us whenever we have any type of emergency. Vibrant. Do better, babe. Did she say the Q-tip people? I think she did. Now, a leading proponent of reparations and the author of a very influential piece advocating reparations is Mr. Coates, the person who interviewed Barack Obama. It's been said, uh, I think, or alluded to repeatedly throughout this conversation that somehow wealthy African-Americans are immune to these effects. But in, in addition to the wealth gap that's cited, one thing that, that folks should keep in mind is that quote unquote wealthy African Americans are not the equivalent of quote unquote wealthy white Americans in this country. The average, the average African American family in this country making $100,000, you know, decent money, actually lives in the same kind of neighborhood that the average white family making $35,000 a year lives in. That is totally tied to the legacy of enslavement and Jim Crow and the, uh, the, uh, the input, and the idea in the mind that white people and black people are somehow deserving of different things. Uh, if I injure you, the injury persists even after I actually commit the act. If I stab you, you may suffer complications long after that initial actual stabbing. If I shoot you, you may suffer complications long after that initial shooting. Not the That's same. the case with African Americans. There are people well within the living memory of this country that are still suffering from the after effects of that. Now, in a Rasmussen January 2021 survey, 28% of likely voters supported reparations. Only 18% of Republicans, 35% of independents, but 60% of Democrat likely voters support reparations. Now, according to conservative author Michael Medved, since so many of today's non-Black Americans are descendants of post-Civil War immigrants, as few as 5% of today's whites have what he called a generational connection to slavery. University of North Carolina historian and author of a book called Soldiering in the Army of Northern Virginia, a statistical portrait of the troops who served under Robert E. Lee, estimates that 4.9% of the population, or 24.9% of households in slave states, own slaves. Now get this, of the free blacks living in the South, some were slave owners. Famed historian Carter G. Woodson found that in 1830, 3,776 free Negroes owned 12,907 slaves. Historian Roger McGrath notes, quote, every one of the 13 states and most of the major cities that would become part of the Confederacy had substantial numbers of black slave owners. New Orleans, by both numbers and by proportion, had the most. A staggering 28% of free blacks in New Orleans owned slaves, end of quote. Mm. Those we call Native Americans also owned slaves. McGrath writes, accompanying the Cherokee on their trail of tears were some 2,000 black slaves. They were put to work on Cherokee farms in the new tribal home, raising cotton, corn, and garden crops, and tending hogs and cattle. During the antebellum decade, slavery reached its peak among the five civilized tribes. The Cherokee, numbering only 20,000 themselves, 
owned nearly 5,000 black slaves. The Choctaw, 2,500. The Creeks, 2,000. And the Chickasaw and Seminole, about 1,000 each. To protect their slave property, the five civilized tribes, except for a few dissident factions, sided with the Confederacy when the Civil War erupted, end of quote. Now, the government did not own slaves. People did. Conservative writer Dinesh D'Souza estimates that no more than 10 Republicans, 10 out of 395,216 slave owners, according to an 1860 census, owned slaves. The Ku Klux Klan was founded by Democrats. Mm. Congressional Democrats were overwhelmingly opposed to the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. As a percentage of the party, more Republicans voted for the Civil Rights Act of 1964 than did Democrats. Maybe Democrats should choose themselves to pay for reparations. Mm. But white man bad. But conservatives are bad people. Oh, my goodness. It just boggles my mind, y'all. It's absolutely crazy that tons of folks all across America still don't understand this. They still want to point the finger. But as we know, common sense, it just ain't that common anymore. And these people are living a completely delusional lifestyle in a completely delusional world. The Q-tip girl that went completely vulgar, the guy that was speaking, I think his last name was Coates. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's time to wake up. Not being woke. I mean reality. Look around. Look at all the division, the chaos, the evil, and just the division that is being sold and grossly profited on by the media, by the Obamas, by all these athletes that are woe is me, virtue signal, but making millions and billions of dollars, acting like they're owed something that I never owned a slave. You never owned a slave. What's the deal, man? All of these goofy Democrats, this way of thinking is asinine. It's absolutely crucial that videos like this are shared in society. And it's paramount that people like Larry Elder and Thomas Sowell are heard because their level of clarity and perspective that they bring is needed in our culture. They're black. Plain and simple. That's, that's what it is. And people don't seem to listen to black issues unless it's coming from a black perspective. Well, here you go. And I'm not sure if Mr. Elder is a faith filled, God fearing man, but I always respect that he tells it like it is in regards to the world that we actually live in, where many have been brainwashed by virtue signaling narratives. He just gives you the blunt truth. He likes logical thinking. So I like him straight up. Bless his soul. And I seriously pray that the world can start viewing things through the front windshield scope, that lens, and focus on the things that that we can control that are right in front of us and not constantly falling into the, the trap of the past, things you can't change. No man or woman today should have to pay for sins of the past that our ancestors committed. Not black, not white, not Asian, not Hispanic, not conservative, not liberal, Republican, Democrat, whatever fancy names you want to label it as, nobody should have to pay for that because Jesus already covered that for all of humanity. Not a one-time deal. He covered it forever. That means all the filthy sin that you've committed, that I've committed, that you want to keep behind closed doors, locked up in the closet that you don't want to be unveiled in the public everybody's got sin going back to adam and eve we all got the same ancestors and the sinless one the messiah bore that on the cross and beat death then three days later was resurrected so there's one race the human race and that's the only thing that we should be doing right now is repenting turning to god and that's the only thing that can clean away all this sin and unrighteousness that we see today and in the past first john 1 verse 9 says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And then Acts 3 verse 19 goes on to say, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. And some of y'all are saying, but what about slavery? What about racism? What about all those things? In regards to that, I got another one for you. The Bible answers all questions. The basic instructions before leaving earth touches on every single issue and, and thing that you could imagine. And it gives the solution as well. Now, I know this won't be a popular crowd favorite, but Matthew 6, verse 14 and 15 says, For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your heavenly Father will not forgive your transgressions. And then Ephesians 4, verse 31 and 32 says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. So unless you're perfect, which you're not, I'm not. If you've sinned, you're called to forgive me just like I'm called to forgive you because Christ has forgiven all of us when he sent his one and only son because he loved us that much and didn't want to wipe us all clean, gave us another chance, gave us Jesus Christ, the sinless one. 
He covered all that. It's already covered. That's how we solve this problem. Get God back in the schools, put the truth in front of people, share the gospel. That's the solution to all of this. Now, I know a lot of people, including some of y'all watching, don't know God, don't fear God, and definitely don't love God, but how's that working out? Let's be honest. Let's be completely transparent. How's that working out? How's the suicide rates? How's the genders? How's how's everything, all the satanic values and non-accountability and, and not no consequences for actions? How's that actually going on the day-to-day -day walk that you see all around you? Can we honestly say that this is a world that we're comfortable living in for the rest of our days, that we're comfortable passing along to our children and grandchildren that you're comfortable with them growing up in? And let's even say that you're crazy enough to be a fan of this culture and all across the world, a fan of the way things have played out so far. Say you got boatloads of money, you got cars, fame, women, men, etc. What's next? You've already reached the, the pinnacle of what you would deem as a successful life. So What's the sequel look like? Because none of us are uh, naive to some of y'all may be, but I'm not naive to think that I'll live forever physically here on Earth. So what's the next chapter look like when you die? Spoiler alert, none, nada. You can't strap a U-Haul to a hearse. And the only way to heaven is through Christ the Son. So if you don't repent and turn towards him, the Lord, you got two options. Going to heaven, which I just told you how, or going to hell, where it's eternally hot, eternally painful, eternally you have to see Satan and live in that just guilt and it is horrible. You don't want that. National teeth, fiery furnace. The reason I talk about all this stuff is to bring people to the only kingdom that matters. All this stuff is falling by the wayside. It collects rust and moth and vermin. You can't take any of it with you. Like I just said, the only fulfillment there is because no amount of possessions or clout or whatever fame can bring you everlasting joy. That can only be found by loving the savior. But that's all I got for today. If you got any value from this, you like my rant, you like Larry Elder's perspective, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you're not already, ring the notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a video. If you wanna take it a step further, you like what we're doing over here, you can always buy awesome shirts like this Waymaker design made by my lovely wife over in her Etsy store, bleach, no bleach, all different colors, Christian, American designs, all of that. We even got tumblers now available, so go check that out. All my links are always linked down below if you do wanna support the channel. Uh, I appreciate y'all showing up, I love you praying for this world. I'm praying for you. I ask that you do the same. Till next time, I love y'all. Godspeed. I'm gone.